Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Yeah, good evening. Hey everybody, welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. So I hope you had a very good weekend. And uh, this is the last week of this model. So that is very, very good. As usual, what we're gonna do first is we're going to check about uh, the platform, okay? So let me just check here. So this is a uh, unit number four. And the homework for tonight is this one. So we're gonna check about the correct answer and then we're going to send it. And that's it. We don't need to type, so I guess it wouldn't be any problem. Okay. Perfect. So we're going to check the attendance. So Ada Patricia Linares Galdamos. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Alejandra Michelle Wesson Najera. Ana Selmi Chepes. Edwin Alexander Ayala Erazo. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present. Good. Maybe Coromoto García de Calderón. Manuel Antonio Palma. María Elena Guadalupe Peñate de Escobar. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Evening. Silvia Soleima Rodríguez de González. Present, Susana Beatriz Ortiz de Cornejo. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Walter Mauricio Morales Arau. Present. Good. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta Ochoa. Present. Good, perfect. Oh, I see that. I'll send you zero. Okay. And nobody else. Okay, very good. So today we're going to start unit number four. And we're going to start with a little video. We're going to speak about um, training. So the video is about training and some mistakes that we do when we're delivering training to people. So let's see how it goes. Let's check something so you can hear. Yeah, this is it. So check the pronunciation as usual, the grammar, the way that it speaks, and also the main idea of the video. Here we go. Hey guys, this is Eric with Painting Business Pro, and in this video, we're going to talk about training mistakes that you should not make. All right, so do not make these mistakes when you're training your new employees. There's a lot of others to this, but these are some of the basic ones. So uh, let's get to it. First, uh, don't be too fast or too quick. All right, so there's a tendency to be lazy when you're training people. All right, so nine times out of ten, people err on the side of being too lazy with training rather than being too thorough. Too thorough is not really going to cause any problems, but being too quick or too fast is going to cause problems. So rather than being too fast, too quick, you need to be thorough. It's ongoing training and it's really never ending. Okay. Um, you should be always developing your team to the next level 
And in order to do that, you always need to be developing yourself to the next level. You can't train someone to be better than you are. Well, you can sometimes, but only to some degree. Okay, so if you want to get really, really amazing at training and developing a team, you have to always be working on training and developing yourself to be better as a leader, as a manager, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as a salesperson. You always need to be developing yourself so that you can always be developing your team. And when you're always developing your team, your team is constantly getting better. They're getting better results. They're being, and when they get better results, you can compensate them better so they're making more money and they're, they're literally creating more opportunities for themselves into the future. Okay, so training never ends. And the biggest lie people tell themselves is you think that you hire someone and you train them and then they are supposed to do their job for you. And that's not how it works. All right, so you don't, you don't use people, you don't manage people. You provide opportunities to people and what you get in return for providing opportunities to people is you get to have a bigger business. But just because you built a business doesn't give you the right to hire someone and then tell them what to do and you're, you can't expect that they're just gonna do stuff for you. Okay, people work in self-interest. Your, your access to building a great team is to take care of people and continue to train them. Number two, assuming your new employee knows anything is a mistake. They assume, instead, assume they know nothing, nothing. Anything that you assume they know is going to backfire in your face, okay? So just assume they know nothing when you're doing the training process and that way you'll make sure that you always cover everything you need to. If you assume they know stuff, some people might know it, some people might not. And the people that don't, it's going to cause a problem later. So assume they know nothing when you're training. Next is a, a mistake people make is training from experience. So you have a lot of experience. You know a lot of stuff about the thing you're training about. And we get excited as, as people, we get excited when we share about things we've learned a lot about or we know a lot about. We, gen, we naturally get excited about that. And then all of a sudden you start going on all these tangents and you're talking about this and you're talking about that. The big, a big mistake people make in training is training from experience. So don't train from experience in like your head in just random tangents. Be systematic about your training. Train from your systems. Don't train from your experience, train from your systems. Systems should be built from experience, but you want to train your team on the systems specifically. Um, and that's gonna create a uniform, uniform results throughout the company. And that becomes really important when you start having layers of employees. All right, right? Like I've got my business partners and then we've got other business partners. We have lead production managers, then production managers, and then subcontractors. And we've got layers of people. And so if everyone is just training their version, by the time we get five layers deep, people aren't even following the systems anymore. You need to maintain the integrity of the business by only training using systems. The next thing here is unrealistic expectations. Uh, this is a huge mistake people make. You have unrealistic expectations of people. You think that you can hire someone, you can tell them something once, and they're just gonna do it and they're gonna do it perfectly. You just have such high expectations of people, maybe not you, but likely you do. You have really high expectations of people and they're just not gonna meet them, okay? So instead, don't have any expectations at all. Just take 100% responsibility for your team member's success, and so no matter where they're at, you should be tracking their results. And if their results aren't good enough, then it's your job to train them to be better. But if you have expectations of people being here, then if they fall in here, you're gonna be upset, you're gonna get angry, you're gonna be frustrated with them, you're gonna think they're no good, blah, 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 blah. So don't have unrealistic expectations. You're only setting yourself up to fail. And last but not least, uh, this is a huge mistake, is people don't give their employees room to make mistakes. Like, this goes with their unrealistic expectations too. So you have these unrealistic expectations or you don't give people room for mistakes and when they screw up, you, act, you get upset. Um, or, and, and you're angry because you're like, I shouldn't have to be dealing with this right now. This is why I'm paying you. Now I'm doing your job for you. And do, you, you should do this. And you, you think people should be able to read your mind and know exactly what you want. But here's the thing is every time there's a failure or a breakdown or a problem with a new employee, I like it. 
And I like it because it's inevitable that it's going to happen. Because you have your whole life, you have a past, and you have all this experience and work experience, and your employee has all this work experience. So based on their past experience and based on your past experience, you both have certain expectations of how things will be done. So in any given situation, your employee has one expectation and you have another expectation. And it's impossible for you to hire somebody where you guys literally just have perfect matching expectations about everything. So they're going to handle a certain situation a certain way based on their past experience, and you're going to expect them to handle it a different way. And then there's this mismatch. All right, and when there's a mismatch, we tend to get upset, frustrated, mad, annoyed, like that. But that's totally ineffective because you're getting mad at them for something that they didn't know. If they would have known, then, then you could be mad, but they didn't know. And, and so here's the deal. Anytime there's a problem or a breakdown, right, or there's a mistake that happens with someone, it's a good thing, okay? So I give everybody one free pass for every type of problem that you could run into. So the first time that someone screws up with something, it's totally okay. And I say, hey, here, this is a mistake, this is a breakdown, and this is a problem. It's okay though, I know you didn't know, but now you know. And so here's why this is a problem, here's how we're gonna handle situations like this in the future, are we on the same page now? Okay, great, so that's the new rule, now if you screw this up again, these will be the consequences. And so every single time there's a mistake, we actually have an opportunity to strengthen our working relationship. Because there's no possible way that in the training process, you can cover every hypothetical problem that you're going to run into. And even if you could, expecting people to memorize every single one of those things isn't going to happen. People remember things that are significant. And when there's a problem or a breakdown, that's significant. This is when real learning occurs. This is when real learning takes place. And this is when your relationship actually gets created and built stronger with your team. And that's also why it's so important to me that the people who work with me work with me forever. Because no matter who I hire, we're going to run into mistakes. And the longer they work with me, the more mistakes that are going to happen. And the more mistakes that happen, the better our working relationship becomes and the more we become on the same page until we literally do get to a point where I have business partners where we don't even need to talk. We know exactly how we both work. All right, so there's some of the main mistakes that people make in training. So just review these, write them down, notice which mistakes you make and review this video before you actually train employees. And as I've said before, if you want a much more detailed deep dive and you want us to really walk you by the hand and building your team, everything from your job postings, who you should be hiring, how to do your interviews, your employment agreements, your training process, your training schedule, your skill breakdowns, the systems themselves, all of it, check out the link in the description um, where we have a team building training course because this is something we're really passionate about because we want to help business owners like you build, your, build a better business. And a huge part of that is being a great team builder. So we'll have a couple more videos about this. Feel free to check out the channel if you want more of the free videos on how to build teams or check out the link below. Um, we'll see you in another video. Okay, what did you get from the video? Decision, things that you have seen. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Excuse me, my, but I have had problem with my a Google account. Maybe I need okay. some advice from you. <laughs> <laughs> so you had problems okay, with the Google because, Google account. Yes, my my Google account. I I think I have forgotten my uh, password. You know. Oh, okay. But it's okay now. Okay. okay. Uh, it was quite interesting. Although I I I start listening in the middle of of the video. And you know, uh, it is uh, in the in in the organizations when you hire uh, new teams or new new colleagues. It is so important, you know, that uh, do you not have unrealistic expectative? You know, for example, you can give them some KPI, and if they are not uh, uh, according to uh, the CV, the knowledge man, they they broke to the to the company. 
and then you are demanding something that they they don't know that the new uh, employee don't know and and so uh, for example we have a a fry, phrase where you say you cannot ask to a monkey that he can uh, the monkey swim you need to ask to the monkey that the monkey trap trees you know because and it is about by some organization, you know, by some training, it happened, it could happen. And for example, when the trainer should have the knowledge about the 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 the, 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 the what uh, what the the people that are new hiring know the knowledge and uh, never assume that they know anything or that they know nothing because it's it must be the right uh, measurement to construct the right training so that the people are motivated and not disappointed from the first days uh, on yes and and it is also a a mistake that i have uh, it has happened to me that some trainer intend to uh, construct a training only from experience, you know? And we have too many information and knowledge in the internet that it is always a very good recommendation when you mix new knowledge, investigation, research, research with experience, but not only experience, because you can you can also be unsympathetic for the for the new trainer uh, training you know yeah. okay it, it was what i got ah on the last one was very important you know no room for mistake it is very nowadays it is very important to construct spaces you know to uh, where are mistakes allowed because from mistake you can learn a lot and you can motivate people, you know, to participate on be and to be innovative and to create and not always uh, waiting, you know, for the rules and the, uh, but uh, for manuals, you know, it is the, a very bad uh, a way to generate new ideas and a very effective teamwork. If you uh, not allow room or opportunities for mistakes, you know, and how you handle the mistakes, you know, uh, because sometimes people start on the from mistakes on, and the right the the proper question is what we what did we learn from the experience, and okay. what what can we do better in the future. Very thank good. you. Ah, uh, thank you for your comments. They are also very, very nice. Always very nice. So, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, provide training is not that easy. It's, it's something that we need to consider. It's a it's a huge work actually. Any other comments from the video? No more. Okay. So as we were saying here with my bed, uh, it's not it's not that easy. We need to consider many things, right? Whenever we are going to deliver the training. And that is the topic for this unit number four, as you can see there in the book, conducting training. So it says at the end of the unit, I will be able to plan and execute a short face-to-face -face training session for employees at my company. So, and there are some questions. Number one. Are you sent to trainings often? Uh huh. What do you yes, think? Sir. Okay. In this case, I frequently I receive training. Okay, very good. So, uh, let's say how how often is uh, once a month, once uh, mm -hmm. bi weekly. Yeah. Yes, one or once or twice. 
for a week, teacher. Ah, oh, there's a lot, yeah. Yes, a lot of Very good, perfect. Thank you very much. Anybody else's? How often do you go to training? Yes, teacher, in my case, I have a, a training calendar for all year. Some training are mandatory and other are uh, for our uh, development in the in our work. Okay, very good. So sometimes it's like that one, right? There are different kinds of training depending on what you need to learn or what you need to check, review. Sometimes there are trainings that are like review of previous things. So everybody does the procedure or um, the things that they have to do. Very good, thank you. Uh, what is a memorable experience you have lived in one of the trainings you've attended? That is the next question. So what was a very good training, in, in short words? A very good training that you attended. And what was the experience? Tell us about it. A very a, a memorable experience I have to leave is always when the trainer is inspired. Because, you know, I have observe a lot of of trainee trainee trainer no trainer and trainee yeah trainer is the deliver and trainee the, is the one that receives the trainee that they are quite obligated you know uh, attending the 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 training and you know they are total dismotivated and so and the and they need a trainer that is inspired, you know, that gives passion to the to the people, to the training what we learned. And I have uh, I have experienced it with the very old Pepade. Very old Pepade here in El Salvador. The most of the trainer was really inspired by management training. It, it's very valuable for me. Or it has been on its B, very va valuable for me. Very, very good. Thank you. So that is something that she says is very important. I mean, when when they are motivated, when they feel, when they believe what they are doing, right? I mean, definitely you are going to feel that when you are going to say, yeah, let's do it, right? So that is very important. Very important. Any other person who wants to share? Any very good experience when you were receiving a training? How was the experience? Nobody else. Next question then says, how would you describe the most effective training you have had? So part of that one is what Maeve said. I mean, you need to believe what you're going to do, but there, there are all the other things that you have to do, right? So for a train, a train to be effective, there are certain things that we need to do. What are those things? In your opinion. I, I would I would make more interesting these que questions. Eric, uh -huh. do you find yourself a very effective English trainer? Why? Well, I find myself a very effective trainer, but sometimes, you know, there are different things uh, that affect different situations. So, for example, one of the things that affect something that I, for you to achieve things are like the book, the topics that we have to present. Sometimes there are some topics that, um, I mean, are difficult and we need more time. So it's not effective. It's not effective if I say in one class a grammar and then we don't just, I mean, we don't practice that anymore. But that is the way that the, the course is designed. So what I do to be more effective is that I bring different examples. I try to do different dynamics, different activities. So 
you try to get the most of the experience. So that is something that I try to do. So everything is practical. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very good. So uh, anybody else's? It said, huh? um, 17 years ago, I received my FIRSAP course. It was great. To this day, I am still using using the program in a different model, but it's very, very nice experience because uh, I continue to learn about the program. Yes, yeah, that, that is true. I mean, sometimes we learn things that, I mean, you uh, are valuable because you, you use that the rest of your life, right? So that is something that impacts you a lot. Any other experience? Yes, teacher. I believe that depends a lot of factors. One factor, the level of interesting you have in the trainer. Um, and the other, the condition, the condition, physical teacher, or inclusive the, the, the your mood <laughs> impact in, in the effective or not when you take a, a, a training in my tal train but i remember the i took um a complete program with the del carnegie when i when i was beginning my career and in general the program is um, the program offer um uh, offered to teach the soft skills. And I remember that the program was very effective for me. Very good. So, yeah, I mean, in mind um, the impact of some people or some trainings that, I mean, we have received a lot of trainings. I have received lots of trainings but we know that we remember the very good ones and we remember the very bad ones so because that's the way it is sometimes we say oh we went to that training it was not good but also we sometimes also we have teachers i mean or professors at the university or the school that they teach very well as well and that is probably more difficult because when you go to a training Maybe the training is just five, four hours or two days or something like that. But to teach and motivate people every day for a year, that is not easy, right? It's, it's difficult. And uh, also what you say is also very important. I mean, uh, depending on many things. For example, here, uh, we, we were discussing that last week uh, about some challenges of video conference. Sometimes the internet connection fails. Uh, there is no power. Uh, sometimes you you need to continue work. Sometimes I mean, you're tired or you're sick, right? Definitely, it's going to it's not going to be the same. Or you have a problem and you're thinking how to solve that problem. Many things happen, right? So that I mean, maybe even if the if the train if the trainer and the and the topic is very good, if you feel like that, I mean, you are not going to feel the same. So that is another thing that depending on 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 the per, on, on the people that are going to attend that one, the perspective is going to be different, right? Good. Next question it says, what are three characteristics you consider an effective training session should have? What do you think? Well, teacher. Yeah. In, in these uh, questions. Uh, I consider is uh, a personal, uh, personal uh, thinking. 
Eh, it depends the necessity that people people have. In my opinion, I I consider I need uh, to have a firstly like uh, maybe mentioning before a uh, motivation uh, motivation in in different uh, in general in general motivation in general uh, second go go to the point in my specific area uh, or duties and for me the last one is uh, have a a good uh, teamwork uh, to build a team force to to have a good environment uh, also increase our production in in also all have a a good benefit. Okay. So this is in my opinion. Yeah, I'm mean, actually that is very important. So, so what you say is, is something very valuable. When you are delivering a training, it has to be something that people are going to feel valued, like relevant. Something that you really say, oh, this is going to be something for me so I can do better. Uh, some other things. Very good. Any other characteristics for a uh, an effective training session? What do you think? You know, I think a, a very important characteristic for, for an effective training must, must be a, a deeply commitment from the trainer about the results, you know? But a, it, can, it could happen that a lot of trainer come and deliver the class, deliver the session, and they do you have this sense they are not a commitment commit 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 with the results you know they are going in the classroom only to deliver that and ta 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 and it is you know i think it is very important a deeply deeply com uh, realistic commitment with the results you know because it it motivates also you know the students the trainings very good so that is something very important actually in a company when you deliver a training remember that almost always almost always the trainings are in productive hours sometimes it's uh, i mean in the morning in one hour and so if you are going to take people out from production and you're going to stop producing something it has to be valuable right and it has to be uh, oriented to the results. Definitely, that is very, very important because um, there are objectives, there are uh, goals that we need to, to achieve. So everything has to be aiming to that one. And, and yes, new topics, depending on what you want to do. So, and modern things, so as uh, Susanna was saying in the chat. Good. Any other opinion, any other characteristic that you believe we have to have a four effective training sessions. Okay, the other one is interesting. What are some qualifications an effective trainer should have? What do you think? Qualification is more about, um, I think, for example, patience. It is, un, I, I appreciate, so say, I could say I admire from you that you are really patient, you know, to, to be teaching advanced three and we all, we have the 17 students have a different English 
skills level. <laughs> oh my God! Oh, if I were, if I uh, were, were you? Oh, I, I, I could get crazy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But you, you really are really patient. And I think it is a very good qualification. Uh, the, the flexibility, you know, when you recognize that the, tra the trainees uh, don't advance as the velocity you have expected, you know, you, you need to be flexible. Flexible, is this the right pronunciation? Yes. Yeah, you, need, you need to be flexible, you know, to 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 slow down to try to explain again and with a, a new examples and i think it is also good and i i can for me it's also important that the the trainer are really approachable you know you you have you have been talking about a uh, minutes ago about it you know if you see that some uh, the 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 trainees are uh, tired or, or boring, and then you you try you try to to have this the new approach to be flexible with the contents of the trainings, you know, and I, I think uh, I I have seen this qualification also in you, in your style to to uh, to give your your English class. Oh, perfect. Thank you very much for the feedback. It's very interesting. And yes, you know, uh, I, I believe that I told you before that I, I enjoy to be here. I'm tired and we are all tired. But if you don't enjoy what you are doing and you don't know what you're doing, it's, it's quite difficult. And you need to you need to mirror the classes. Not all the classes are the same. So, for example, this model, the advanced five, I have delivered this like five times, but it's not the same. I mean, because you are unique, you have different skills, different personalities. Sometimes I change. I'm going to do this dynamic, and with other group, I'm going to do something different. Uh, the thing is that we we speak and we have fun, we laugh, things that was so we can continue practicing. That is it. And there are different qualifications depending on what you what you need to achieve, right? So uh, a lot. I believe that to to be a teacher, a professor at the university is is not easy. In my opinion, if I ask, uh, if you ask me, I believe that one of the most important is when you have the vocational way. Okay, but because teacher is easier if you it's less complicated if you compare with the primary teacher. <laughs> the primary is. <laughs> <laughs> but but the the other comment teacher I agree with uh, my big comment. Um, inclusive. I like how you design your class when you identify the the you identify when we need to more participation for. Uh, it's good because um, you maintain the the rhythm, rhythm, the rhythm, the, the ring, ring, rhythm, rhythm, rhythm in the class is very very important, teacher, because uh, the the expectation is uh, uh, we. Mm, the student, I believe that we maintain the 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 how do you say the attention in in your class. Okay, thank that's you it, for the it. figure. That's thank it. you. Yeah, that is very important. I mean, uh, yes, as I was telling you, is uh, for these classes is difficult because I know that you're tired, that you from your work, that you have to have dinner. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I know. So that's what I try to do, different things. So we have fun, you know? English is fun. I always thought that um, you can do a lot of good things and practice in very good ways. So that will be it. Of course, it's not the same if we are in 
in the beginner than in the advanced, right? So depending on many things. And as you say, for example, with little kids, you know, it's difficult. Uh, there are things that are very, very difficult. Sit down, pay attention. You need to change activities very, very often. Because, I mean, if, if not, you don't, you lose them, right? Uh, and, the time of the attention, teacher. Yeah. The time of the attention, only three or five minutes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it's complicated. Yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult. But also, it's very sweet. I have taught also to kids, and it's very nice. They really love you. They say, ah, teacher. That is amazing. It's, it's very, very good. <laughs> okay, the uh, last question is an interesting one. Would you like to be a trainer sometime? To deliver it? Oh, well, and tell me you are already a professor, right? So good. So. Yes, I like to be trainer for adults, you know, for mm -hmm. adults and uh, for... So do I, maybe. Uh, maybe. Yes, <laughs> and, and, not, and not for... Uh, and I prefer to be a trainer when the activity is not compulsory. It's not mm -hmm. obligation. I love it when the people pay for themselves to be trained. It voluntary. Is, it is, voluntary. Yes, it's voluntary. It is, yes, the atmosphere is, is different, you know, the environment you can construct with them. They are very, uh, sometimes I have the, the impression <coughs> a lot of, all, of us are here not by a mandatory way, you know, and it is very important, you know, because of the schedule from eight to 10 and so, and then I think sometimes it's, it is more, I am here because I, I like English and I don't know why I am here by Insafor. <laughs> My husband wanted to be here in another level. And then I say, okay, I am going to support you attending also one course. <laughs> Very good. That's the way it is. But, yes. And, and, but I, I don't know. It is very important to, I like better to be trainer when the activity is not compulsory. It's more, you know, by them, then self demand. Yeah, definitely. That makes a big difference because when somebody wants to learn, I mean, definitely that is something that uh, makes an impact. I mean, the two parts, as in any communication channel, if the two parts are committed, I mean, everything is going to go well, right? Okay. So we're going to go and check some. Me uh, okay. Compartir mis conocimientos. okay, go ahead. Uh, teacher. Yeah. Uh, in my case, uh, for sure, uh, I have uh, a lot of experience when I where I I, I work. Uh, when you you ask uh, for, uh, I would like to if I would like to be a trainer. Yes, yes. Because it's the opportunity to uh, to grow in a, a, a up up level, and and, and then uh, we uh, we can the 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 chance the chance to to improve to and to encourage other. And a give or a, to bring a, to share my experience or my knowledge to others. Okay, very good. So that is very important. That is, I believe that that is the biggest motivation for somebody to become a trainer, right? Because you want to share, you want to help others. That is very, very important because, uh, I mean, there might be other other motivations, right? But if you don't want to help people, if you do it, for example, only for the money, uh, yeah, it's not going to be good, right? Money is good, I mean, but 
there shouldn't be that the motivation. There should be other, other motivations so you can help people. And you know, another good thing about uh, training, to be a trainer, is that you also learn because uh, you are teaching and you learn from the process of the methodology and you also learn from the people that you are helping. So that is a very good thing. I agree. I agree with Manuel and, and you because for me, a very important characteristic is that the, the teacher, the trainer, is a, is a continuing learner, you know? That, that the, uh, the trainer is always interesting Interest or interesting? It's always Inter interest. Interesting. It's always interesting to learn both ways from the students, you know, and and, and from yeah. another sources. Because for me, to be a good trainer means also a big challenge to read a lot, to investigate a lot, you know, that you are able to give always new things to the students or to the trainer. And more, uh, and more important nowadays that e that everyone has the possibility to access to information and knowledge. And then I think it is a very big challenge, you know, to be a trainer. Yeah, you are right. So yeah, it's it's not it's not easy. And of course, uh, at the very beginning, you you have to learn lots of things. But if you have uh, the motivation, if you have the uh, the voluntary, the willingness to do everything well, you are uh, you are going to be good on that one. Okay, so you know what is a trainer, right? What is a trainer? Someone that gives knowledge to others, that teach. Very good. That's, That's it. Uh -huh. And on the other hand, what is a trainee? The receptor of the training. <laughs> exactly. It's who receives the people that receive. Very good. It's the one who receives, right? And what is, in your opinion, training needs analysis? I consider teacher is a capability to identify a, the different uh, needs. Uh, I I forgot the word, but uh, what is the opposite to strength? Weakness. The, okay, thank you. Uh, Mostly when we have a witness in any any area, uh, from there uh, come up the the necessary to have a a, a training a training. Very good. So that is it. Uh, I mean. It's not just that you are going to say, I'm going to deliver a training, right? It's not just like that. There should, there should be a need, right? And you need to identify how you are going to invest money so everybody get the skills developed, the one that you need them to, to do, right? So sometimes also there are other things. I mean, for example, in my company, sometimes they, they give us uh, tips or training about how to relax, not to be that stressed, uh, because it's important also to be like that one. I mean, to be more productive, to be functional, you also need to not to live stressed out, right? So everything's everything is very good. Company officials, what is that? It is like the uh, the reference for where, uh, who we talk when we need something uh, by the company for the com from the company. The officials they like uh, the delegate. 
Well, it's actually, it's something like that. Well, I mean, uh, the company officials are like, like a regular employees uh, or officials or directors from the company that are not subsidized. I mean, they are working by themselves. It's going to be something like that. And there are a few more. Ah, we're not gonna watch this yet. But what is delivery methods? What do you think is that? Okay, delivery methods, it, it refers to the methodology that you use to deliver training. The, the, the verb for training is not to give a training, but it's to deliver a training. So the delivery method is methodology that you use for you to, to, to give the training to all of it. But the word, the, the verb is going to be deliver. You're going to deliver a training. Okay, so uh, there are many, uh, a lot of methodology. I really like the, the one that is competency-based because in that way you will be able to, to see lots of things into that one. That, so that would be the, the one. Micro-learning, what is that one? You, you learned the details of some topic. You know, you are not learning the general one more than you are going to go into the details of the topic. Very good. So that is it. Teacher, uh, I consider micro learning, maybe it uh, could be a short training or a specific, or a specific uh, training. Yeah, it's something like that. Well, actually, uh, as both of you say, I mean, micro learning is not a training that is going to be a huge training. So you are going to focus on little tasks, little okay. details, so you can move on, so you can uh, learn those little things that maybe are part of uh, a larger process of see. Ongoing, what is ongoing? In, in process, teacher? In March, teacher. Mm -hmm. yeah. In progress, right. Very good. Something that started is still going on. Yeah. Very good. It's a follow, teacher. It's a follow process of training. They continue. That is it. So it's like the one that we're doing right now, right? So this is training. We're going to finish the module, but we're going to continue okay. in the next one, right? Okay. I hope everybody can continue. So the other one says hands-on training. What is that? I think, I, I, I suppose, I am guessing, because of hands-on, it should be something practical. <laughs> <laughs> to, make, to make it practice. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's like, like, teacher, I, I consider... It's like uh, in Spanish, manos a la obra. Something like that one, yeah. So, something <laughs> practical, to be practical, you know? <laughs> like when it's a for train, something it's practical, good. you know? That is it, that is it. I mean, yeah, I mean, the training. city, something with wood carpenter, something like that. Yeah, or definitely. with computer. We have a lot hand-on training when we are learning something with computer and software and so because you you learned uh, practicing it it is no way only theoric only by the theory you need to practice it all the time okay yeah that is it i mean uh, yeah i believe as you can see in my, in my classes that i really like to practice i teach something and then let's practice right and almost always always on fridays then you wrap up and practice a huge way, a huge way. So practice is a very important part of the training because that way uh, you are able to move on into that. Okay, let's check a little bit of grammar. How to use enough plus noun, infinitive, adjective, or uh, enough and infinitive. So there are two structures. One is enough plus the noun plus the infinitive. 
and the other one is uh, additive plus enough plus if. Okay, so uh, let's see who's gonna read it. Um, Rosalena, could you please help me with it? Okay. Enough expresses use the right quantity, quality, degree, or what is needed or expected. Enough occurs in two common patterns with infinitives. Enough plus noun plus infinity. Examples. A. Expert trainers recommend to plan enough time to cover the activities in the training plan to avoid rushing. B. Another important tip for future trainers is to provide enough hands and activities to boost learning. And then adjective plus enough plus infinity. Examples. The materials presented by the trainer were suitable enough to meet the manager's expectations. The training agenda was complete enough to achieve the learning objectives. Perfect, very good, thank you. So you can see that it's very easy, right? On the first one, uh, well, let's check about what the first says. Enough expresses just the right quantity. It's good enough. It's exactly what we need, right? No more, it's not too much. Right, this is correct, it's fine. So, is uh, the right quantity, quality, degree of what is needed or expected. So it's enough, I'm fine. And enough occurs in two common partners with infinities. Remember that this is with infinities, but we can use enough in other ways. But if we talk about infinities, the first one is enough plus a noun plus the infinity. What is the difference that when you use the adjective, adjective is first, look at this. The adjective is first and then enough. But if you use a noun, first is enough and then is the noun. And of course, in both cases, infinitive is going to be at the end. But the position of enough is very important depending on what you're using. If you are using a noun, or if you are using an adjective, so that is important. And there are uh, two examples for each. Experts trainers recommend to plan enough time to cover the activities in the training plan to avoid rushing. So uh, enough, and then the noun time. Another important tip for future trainers is to provide enough hands-on activities to boost learning. So enough hands-on activities. All this is a noun. Okay. In this part, anybody knows what is a tip? Advice. Very good. An advice. And what is to boost? To give, to energize. To... Very good. Yeah, to power up, right? To energize something. Good. Very and nice other... verb, to power up. Yeah. Okay, so the other, the other one, remember, this going to be first the adjective and then enough. And of course, at the end, the infinite. So the materials presented by the trainer were suitable enough. Here, first is the adjective. Suitable enough to meet the manager's expectations. Or the training agenda was complete enough to achieve the learning objectives. So complete is first because it's an adjective. So that is it. Remember that we can use enough in other ways, but with the infinitive, it's going to be either with a noun or with an adjective. Okay, do you have any questions about this little grammar? No questions. Clear as horchata. So let's do the exercise here, number six. Read the following topic sentences. Identify four mistakes related to the use of enough plus infinities. Correct the mistakes and compare your corrections with 
are classmates. And there are six uh, sentences, and there are four mistakes. So I will give you a few minutes for you to, to find the mistakes and to correct. You need to rewrite the sentence in the correct way, okay? I will be here if you need.
Okay, so let's check together. Who wants to check the number one? Let's just say if you're doing it to anticipate enough time. time. Huh? The first one is okay, enough right. plus long is the right one. It's okay. Perfect. Perfect. That is good. The first one is correct. No mistake. So on the first day of training, it's important to anticipate enough time to check the outlets on the training. Uh, what are outlets? Do you know? Does anybody know what is an outlet? No. I know the outlets for shopping. <laughs> well, that is it. But in this case, it's where you connect the computers and anything like that. Okay, number two. Who wants to say number two? You've seen uh, enough activities to evaluate. Very good. Using enough activities, that is the change. Enough activities to evaluate participants' learning is a good strategy to assess if the training is working. What is assess? Do you know? Evaluate. 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 Very good. Number three, who wants to share number three? Yes, no. The training materials should be appealing enough to get trainees engaged. Perfect. That is the change. The training materials should be appealing enough. Enough. To get trainees engaged. Nice. Number four. Uh, who wants to share number four? Different trainers recommend to integrate Right. Interactive enough to integrate enough interactive activity to keep participants motivated. Very good. So it's going to be season trainers recommend to integrate enough interactive activities to keep participants motivated. So enough is before. Very good. Number five. Who wants to share number five? Yes, it is a swears, a triggers adjective, then enough. A useful tip for trainers is to choose a seat arrangement that is suitable enough to promote trainees' interaction. For example, horses, shoe, or cycle. Very good. So that is it. A useful tip for trainers is to choose a seat arrangement that is suitable enough to promote trainees interaction for example to horseshoe or cycle very good and uh, number six who wants to share number three I, I have some doubts here. Involved is a noun or an adjective? Uh, yeah, involved in this case is an adjective. Is a adjective? It's an adjective, yeah. And then adjective, uh, and it should be a successful training allows trainees to be involved enough. Perfect, that is it. So a success. Yeah, as a software training allows trainees to be enough involved through, I'm sorry, involved enough through hands on activities. So at the end, uh, there is an error in the direction. It says four errors, but it's not four, it's five. Only one is correct. Very good, perfect. Uh, do you have any questions before we continue? Okay, let's move on then. 
Uh, we are not going to see this, but we're going to see that in the week. And we have a little bit more of grammar, okay? How to open a paragraph efficiently. Introductory strategies, part one, okay? So uh, who, let's see who is going to read this one. Edwin Alexander. Yes, teacher. Um, a hook or an introductory sentences usually precedes the topic uh, sentences in a page, in a paragraph, right? Paragraph, yeah. Uh, the function the function of the introductory sentences is to catch the reader's attention so they read the complete paragraph. There are varied introductory strategies depending on your style, purpose, and the audience. You will choose the one that is most suitable. Suitable. How do you... How do you read this, the quote? The quote. Oh, the, 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 I'm sorry? The quote. There is raining loud here, I can hear you. Oh, it's raining right here. It's raining cats and dogs. Yeah, it's raining cats and dogs, yeah. exactly. Yeah, as well. Yeah, it's That's in Salvador good. as well. Nice, so it's raining <laughs> in another country, maybe because I'm in Santana. <laughs> You're in Santana, right? Yeah, I'm but, here, but here in San Salvador, it's raining, it's, it's raining cats and dogs, trust me. I can hear yeah. you very well. But um, you hear, you said a quote, a quote. A quote. A quote. Mm -hmm. A quote is a sentence that holds some general wisdom or an uh, expert's opinion. A quote at the beginning of the paragraph gives the reader a preview of what the composition will be about. Writers usually connect the quotation to the topic sentence. Example, you cannot unify everyone's thoughts, but you can unify everyone through a common goal. As a point out by Jack Mack, common goal is what generates unity, and unity leads to more Effect efficient organization. The the revealing question. Another effective way to catch the reader's attention is to present to the uh, provoking questions precede, preceding the topic sentences. The idea is for the audience to answer the questions as they read your paragraph. Very good. So. This is not the topic sentence. This is after the topic sentence in a paragraph. As you may remember, we were discussing about that one, the topic sentence, right? So a hook or an introductory sentence usually precedes the topic sentence in a paragraph. The function of the introductory sentence is to catch the reader's attention. So they read the complete paragraph. And there are varied introductory strategies. Depending on your style, purpose, or on the audience, you will choose the one that is most suitable. And we have two strategies here. The first one is the quote. Okay, so a quote is a sentence that holds some general wisdom uh, or an expert's opinion. Do you know what is wisdom? Wisdom. You have a lot. You have wisdom when you're. Um... You are wise. <laughs> ah, very good. Very wise. <laughs> when you, you have wise, a lot you of have wisdom. Yeah, like when you have a lot of knowledge, right? About knowledge. something. Yeah. Yes. Very good. So a quote at the beginning of a paragraph gives the readers a preview of what the composition will be about. Writers usually connect the quotation to the topic set. Okay, and okay, the quotation is like this. These are the quotation marks, okay? So whenever you are going to write this or, or use this strategy, you are going to use the quotation. Remember that this is when you uh, hear 
when you say something that other person said. So this is a quote. And this is an example. You cannot unify everyone's doubts, but you can unify everyone through a common goal. As pointed by, out by Jack Ma, a common goal is what generates unity. And unity leads to a more efficient organization. Okay, so here, uh, this sentence is something that Jack must say. So when we use this one, it's because it's a quotation, okay? And uh, the other one is the re relevant questions. So another effective way to catch the reader's attention is to present a thought-provoking question preceding the top sentence. The idea is for the audience to answer the questions as they read your paragraph. So the other uh, strategy is that you are going to uh, ask a question in the first part. Uh, I don't know, anything like, uh, have you ever been in a situation where English is important and you were not able to understand another person? And then you start with a sentence and then you say some other things. So these two, uh, these two, um, Strategies are very common and very important in English. So the question is, do you have any questions? Questions for the introductory sentence. Okay, no questions, that's interesting. Let's practice them, okay? Here we are going to assess. We are going to write two verses of an introductory sentence for a paragraph, applying the two strategies shown in the box above. Very easy. So you are going to write the introduction of a paragraph in both ways. So you are going to write two little paragraphs, not that big, two little paragraphs. In the first one, you are going to use the quote, a quotation, and in the second one, you are going to write a question and that's it that's what we're going to do do you have questions about the activity so you can think about it and then you can send let's that let's try of course let's try you can send that in the chat so it's easier for us to check it out okay so you can start thinking about that one and then when you whenever you're ready send the two paragraphs into the chat I will leave there the, the direction so you can check it. Oh, water is coming in. Oh. The clothes.
Uh, yes, Manuel, we're going to write two paragraphs, short paragraphs, using the two strategies, the quote and the relevant question, okay? Just that okay. small. Thank you. Have you today okay, your time. thank you, teacher. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And another one is doesn't show the
Of course, Susana, I can repeat. So um, what you are going to do is to create two little patterns. And there are two strategies that you are going to use to start the pattern. The first one is the quote. And the quote, I mean, there is an example here uh, like this, for example. You cannot unify anyone. So this is a very good example. Because this is the quote. This is the beginning. And then you say here, who is the author? of those words. And then you say what you are saying down. The question is very similar. You put here a question, and then you say why you are saying the question. For example, have you ever been in another country and you feel embarrassed because you don't know the culture? So whenever you go to other country, we need to understand the culture, and that's it. Something like that. So it's going to be very short. And there are two strategies that we're going to use. First is the quote, and the other one is the relevant question. So, and I see some people send that. For example, nobody's democracies are in danger. Do you think that people do not appreciate? That is a good example. My best sent already both, and they are very good. Uh, of course, you have the time, and if you have more questions, I can clarify more, OK?
Okay, I'm going to wait two or three more minutes. And the examples are very good, very nice. So remember that this is going to be part of a bigger paragraph or an essay. Okay, so in the future, we're going to we're going to try to practice all together to write an essay, a whole essay. That is going to be, uh, well, in English, uh, most likely what they do, the teachers do, or professors, uh, is that they tell you, you are going to write an essay, for example, about the war in El Salvador in the 80s. And it's going to contain 150 words or more. That's what they say. But we are not going to do it like that. Let's see what happens in the future, okay? But I see that there are uh, very good examples here. Nice. Ah, that is a good one. What is education? The best weapon to change the world. Nice. Like it. So I, be, I was checking and there are good, good examples here. Okay. And my friends, as you can see, we finished the book. Nice. Amazing. No class the rest of the week. No, it's not true. We're going to come and practice in different ways. <laughs> Okay, I had just a few today, right? I don't know what happened. Maybe everybody's under the rain or electricity problems. Sometimes that happens. Perfect, so we have a few more minutes and we're going to do free practice. All right, uh, we're going to speak all together. So what topic would you like to speak? What, what would you like to discuss? Now you are going to tell me a topic and we're going to discuss about that one. What is education? It's the best weapon to change the world. Uh, we can speak about that one or anything that you may want. What topic would you like to discuss? Uh -huh. Anything, your favorite movie? Well, I think uh, to talk about education, it's a, it's, a, it's a big topic, you know, and very important for El Salvador. I am here in El Salvador, uh, I have been here in El Salvador since 55 years. I arrived in 1985 and I started working with a, a public program about uh, development. And you know, I am very, very worried because uh, in 55 years, uh, I don't see big advance in, in the education system of El Salvador. And I, I feel confident to talk about that because I, I know the until today, <laughs> the 262 municipalities of El Salvador, and I know the rural schools, you know? I, I have worked with the public system in the rural area. And I, I, I can say confidently that the education here, it, it is my country. My two daughters are Salvadorian and I have decided to stay here. I love El Salvador. And I, I, it is very sad to say that the, the, uh, the education system in the rural areas are very, very poor. Although all the investment, the different uh, governments and development programs uh, have intended to make. This is a very, very nice Susana. It is Susana, yeah? No. Yeah, Susana, yeah. Educators, yes. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, education, yeah, it's, it's a big problem because uh, the world is changing and the governments, as you say, they, uh, they don't do a major change. Sometimes they do some changes, they change the curricula, but they just change the topic in order. I mean, it's the same, but in a different book. So uh, it's not that good, right? Maybe the one, go ahead. Teacher, uh, inside the education, we have the inclusive education. It's a education model that aims to meet the need of all children, young or adults. Or is the process that helps to overcome the obstacle, obstacles that limit the present participation and achievement of students as well 
and the process of of the capacity of educational system. I think that inclusive education means that all children enjoy with or without disability or difficult learn together in the various regular education institution, preschool, college, school, middle school, inclusive the university with appropriate support because now for this kind of education is less less inclusive. Okay. Yeah, there are a lot of problems. I mean education is a topic that is is difficult. It's very difficult because I mean we know that it's not good. We know that it's not good. We know that there are people that are very smart, intelligent, uh and that they study a lot and that they become, I mean, very professional person. But it's because you you go beyond the education, right? I mean, uh, that's why we are here, for example. I mean, uh, English is now is something that is necessary. I mean, it's, it's not something that you use just to travel. You use that to work. I mean, you really need that one. And uh, it's pretty sad that some people, for example, they they see the opportunity uh, of INSA for, for example, and they don't don't take advantage of that one, and, and that is for free. Uh, so there are, uh, maybe my, my point is that there are, there are some tools, there are some things that we can do, but depends also of the people, right? Yes, at school, sometimes the education is not good, but you can continue, you can move on. I know that sometimes pe poor people, they don't have the resources, but then, I mean, there are people, I remember I used to work and I used to go to the university at the same time. I had to pay my, my own studies because that's the way it is here, right? And then when you finish that one, you continue with diploma here, we go to another training. And that is the way that you become the person that you should be. Uh, it's a long process. The sad part is that in other countries, is is better, right? So uh, since they are kids, they have a way to evaluate things. Because maybe the biggest problem that we have is that we teach people like learn this by heart, right? Learn these dates, learn these names, learn this. But sometimes they are not able to, to evaluate things, to analyze. And that is something very beyond that one. Some other values, right? Or I mean financial. I mean financial is something that they should teach in schools. Because people in El Salvador, they don't manage money because they learn to spend money, right? They have $10 and they spend $10. That's it. That's the way it is. Since we were kids, right? You want this and you spend it. But if we had that kind of education at school, I mean, probably next generation would be better, right? Any other opinion? Uh -huh. It is always always interesting since thirty five years. I have I have listen, listened the all the governments in thirty five years wanted to uh, implement the obligated English mat matter uh, in a primary school from primary school until a uh, um, college and you know since 35 years we are here in Minnesota for trying to learn english and all the, the the kids in the rural areas has no not access has not access you know to the english language although one of the economic the the most important economic pillars in El Salvador are the migration to the United States. You know, uh, it is, a, 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 the, therefore I think that education politics somewhere, some, sometimes must change, about really change. Because, you know, everybody here in El Salvador 
uh, must speak English. Everyone, everyone. On the street, yeah. on the bus, you know. But it is not possible. It, it is not possible nowadays. You see yeah. how uh, uh, the people, the adults, make so a big effort to improve the their English skills because it is a need. It is not more a hobby. It is a need, you know. And like Susanne has written, uh, uh, if you go with a language or two languages or more qualification to looking for a job, uh, I it is it would be more opportunities, you know. But that problem is not when you are adult. That problem begins when you are in the primary schools. Yeah. Yeah, because that is of true. this a very oh, bad uh, quality. Excuse me, bad quality of education, not not oriented to the the, the labor market in the, the future. This more in, in a stain, st uh, uh, it is uh, estancado. How do you say estancado? Stuck. A stuck. It is more stuck in the past. And now our children are learning a lot of things from the past. Yeah, yeah, it's very poor, you know. Uh, I guess somebody said something before at the very beginning of this module that we were speaking about different things, and they said it's difficult sometimes for people that I mean, if they cannot write or speak in Spanish very well, I mean, to go and jump into English, I mean, it's it's difficult, right? How how is possible? You need to know first this, and then then you can understand the the other one, right? That that is is a must. So and yeah, people nowadays they, I mean, you see that they are not able to write to to write an email in a professional way or many things. I mean, uh, there in my work sometimes when we hire people, we see some some things that are happening, and I mean, even when they come from private school, sometimes they have some problems, right? So. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting thing. Uh, sadly, I believe that it's not going to change, nor here, nor in the next five years. Yeah, it's, it's not good. It's not good. And, I mean, we could debate here what can we do to solve the problem, but, yeah, at the end, yeah, it's going to be the same. It has been the same for a long, long time. The good thing is that one, that parents, for example, I know that some parents, even when they don't have the resources, they try. They try to give a better education to their kids. So they have a better job or something like that. Good, good. Okay, any other thing before we finish? Uh, do you have any questions, anything else? Okay. Remember that if you receive the InsaForb survey, that is going to be done together on next Friday, this incoming Friday, okay? So don't do it by yourself. We're going to do it here in class. And uh, if you haven't moved on for with the platform, you need to move on, right? Because for Thursday, we have to finish everything. Thursday is the last day to finish all the platform, okay? So please try to do your best and try to check it out. Okay, my friends, let's check the attendance and then let's go to bed. Mondays are difficult. Ada, Patricia, Linares, Galdamez. Adriana, Stephanie, Martinez, Flores. Present. Good. Alejandra, Michelle, Hueso, Najera. Ana, Selmi, Chavez. Edwin Alexander Ayala Erasso. Present. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present. Good. Maybe Coromoto García de Calderón. Present. Good. Manuel Antonio Good Palma. Good evening. Present. Good night. Good evening. Good night. María Elena Guadalupe Peñate Escobar. Mario Ernesto Villeda. 
Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher, good night. Good night. Silvia Suleima Rodríguez de González. Present teacher. Good. Susana Beatriz Ortiz de Cornejo. For you is the 101. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraita. Uh, your microphone doesn't work, but I, I see you, no worries. Walter Mauricio Morales Arau. Present, good night. Good night. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta Ochoa. Present. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you. Have a good night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow in Dreaming English. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Good night. Good night. Good night.